everybody, welcome to John Park's workshop. It's me, John Park, and I am excited for our show today. First of all, I want to thank the uh, good people in Discord and YouTube chat for chiming in to let me know that things were working. For some reason, Facebook chat isn't, uh, or not chat, but Facebook streaming is not happening for me today. So, looks like we're live on Twitch and uh, YouTube, and probably Periscope, although I didn't check. Hey, John. John Shaftstall over in the YouTube chat. Hello, everybody. Uh, so let's get to this, huh? Let me, uh, let me cut the drums there. Sorry about that. We probably have both going at the same time there. Um, I didn't have time to write a new song for today's show, so that was the drums from last week's. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, so yeah, let me know if we've got good audio and good video, and then we'll get started. I know this camera here sometimes lags. This one over here, that one's better. 
So I'm going to head over actually to the workbench. Let me throw on the bench cam here. And uh, let's get started. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Yannick. We got people uh, chiming in from Switzerland. All right, Yannick. Right on. And I see Matambale is headed over to the... Matambale is working both chats, isn't he? Yes? No? Got some pro chatters here. Solid AV. Good. All right. I'm going to head over there so you can see me again. Because I disappeared from the cameras. All right. Uh, so I wanted to talk about panel mounting a project today and actually do a project. Um, and I'm pretty excited about this one because it's a little different than some of the other um, enclosures and mounts that I've done before, which I've tended to do a lot of laser cut stuff, um, acrylic and Baltic birch plywood. In fact, here's a little plug for uh, some enclosures that I made for an article I just wrote that's in the new issue of Hackspace magazine, which talks about uh, laser cut enclosure techniques. And so here's one I did using sort of a typical finger joint uh, press fit, which works really well, particularly with wood. You can glue it up if you want to, if you don't plan on getting back into it, or you can add screws. Um, and I've got some panel mounted buttons and jacks on there. Um, and just to show them, because I thought they were <laughs> kind of cool looking, here's one I did that uses a captive nut, uh, T-nut technique, which you saw me use on the coin acceptor uh, for the arcade project when I built that. Um, and that one's got a little screen, a little knob on it. And then this one here is actually just got a laser mounted on top because why not? Uh, but this is kind of a um, mortise and tenon style, at least these joints here, uh, where we've got um, overhanging panels and then the panels below have some cutouts that go straight up into there. So anyway, those were some little project boxes that I built. Uh, for the new Hackspace magazine. That's the fourth issue. Check it out. Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to pull up the chat over here and fire up the Bluetooth keyboard so that I can chat a little faster on there if I end up typing. Actually, I'll just, I'll just talk. How about that? And top chat. That does it, right? I've got to pause that video. It freaks me out. Live broadcast. There we are. Good. Uh, okay, so the other projects I've done with a lot of panel mount stuff, I've used lasers generally to make the holes. Um, today, I want to show you how to do nice clean mounts into this type of project box. So let me switch out the main camera for that view there. So here's a little inadvertent robot. Uh, and I've got four of these banana plugs on here. So banana plugs, I, I like these. I've used these in some other projects in the past. Um, we just started carrying these in the Adafruit store. And we also have these banana plug um, stackable plugs. So you can put a wire. I'll show you how, how these work in a little bit. Put a wire into the side here, screw it down from the top, and then you can make a connection. But you can also go and piggyback onto one of those connections. Let's say we want to share whatever that is somewhere else with these little stackables. And you can kind of infinitely stack these. So uh, the techniques I'm going to show you don't necessarily have to do with um, these particular plugs. But I am mostly going to focus on round stuff today. If we get time, we'll, we'll do some square stuff. But uh, so typically, when you're going to uh, work in this type of, this is an aluminum uh, project box, you'll typically mark some holes and uh, start them with like a little pilot, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can take an awl and tap it in there, a center punch, something like that, to get a nice little hole started. Um, and then you will typically drill uh, or maybe use a reamer or something like that to make the hole. And those work, those work totally fine. Um, but I want to show you using a tap and die uh, instead, or a punch and die rather, instead. So this is a handheld punch and die. And you'll also find bench mounted ones. You'll find CNC ones, hydraulic ones. There's a lot of cases where things are made by pushing a 
uh, a punch that's a certain shape and, and size that you need. Let me hold that a little closer. In fact, let me switch to this camera. One second here. Uh, let's make that one the big one. I'm gonna move this black thing out of the way so you can see it a little better. So there you go. So there's the, uh, oh, is this thing reversed? Let me flip that camera view. Let's see if that's flipped. There we go. So this little guy here is a punch and it's just a sharp little circle like this and it has a evil little tip, a little point on it so you can get the center exactly where you want it. And then there's a matching die for each punch that receives the material that's being pressed through like this. I've got the wrong one. That's not the right one, here's the right one. So you can see they're matched for size. Uh, so you'll take a pair of these and put them into the tool, whatever tool that is that you're using. And let me put this thing away. So let me switch cameras and I'll show you that in action on our uh, sort of donor box. I've got a fresh box that we'll use, but so this one here, uh, let's say I need to put a hole in the side, let's say, for a switch of some kind. So uh, what you'll do is, and actually I'm going to unscrew this one for a second so you can see how that die comes out. One thing you can do is, uh, you can see it ejected a little disc of aluminum. That was the last thing I punched through. And you can take something you're trying to mount uh, and find a good size. So here I'm going to actually use, just for this example, get that to focus, one of these little uh, TRS, tip ring sleeve, eighth inch audio jacks. And, excuse me, so long as that fits, this one's a little big actually, but I'm going to leave this one on just so I don't have to change the tooling out. So long as this fits and doesn't go all the way through, we'll be okay. You usually want a better fit than that. Um, but if I want to get that little audio jack into the side of my case here, I can screw this back into here. And let's see, will we be able to do a super close up? Pull this camera up and out a little bit for you. Uh, and the throat of this tool determines how deep into the material you can get. Uh, and you can also, I'm going to leave this here, but you've got a little guide that you can use right now. It's set to uh, about an inch away. That's not a super precise guide. I would measure it and mark it. Um, and so maybe if I go this way, you'll be able to see it well. Yeah, so I'm going to go, let's say I'd marked, that's exactly where I want to put some... Uh, audio jack into the side of this project. So you can see I've got the little um, tip of that, you can barely see that there, the little tip of that is right where I want to make the hole. And keeping my fingers out of the way of the upper part here, you just squeeze this. And now I'm going to pull this away, it's going to leave a pretty nice clean hole. You can see you don't get any of that twisting uh, and you don't really get much def deformation of the surface like you may get with other tools, particularly drills. You may find that you uh, bend the surface down. As long as your tools are sharp, if you're using a punch and die, get a super nice uh, clean hole. Uh, in the uh, YouTube chat, we have a question from John Schaffstall. What's the largest hole that this tool can make? So. This kit comes with a 930 seconds, which is a little bit of the, bigger than a quarter inch. So a quarter inch is the second biggest, and then this 930 seconds. Um, so, and in millimeters, that's about 7, 7.14, it says. Uh, so it's not a huge hole, and you can see I struggled a little bit to get through this, and this is just aluminum. So uh, as you try to get through... Uh, stronger materials or use a bigger die and punch, you would want a, um, a bigger tool to actually get more leverage. And so that's where you'll find either you'll improvise and put a pipe on the end of one side of this and get a lot of leverage, or you can use uh, more of an arbor press style um, tool that is 
uh, sitting on your bench and has a nice long handle on it. So um, that's the punch and die. I also wanted to, so let's just finish this demo here. Let me switch this camera back. I want to show you uh, when you use the punch and die, you actually get a really nice clean hole. There's no cleanup that I'm going to do here. It's, it's actually, you can see it's got maybe just a little bit of a chamfer to it. Super clean, both sides. There's not a lot of ragged stuff there. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to place this TRS eighth inch jack through and screw on the little nut there. Now you might put down some uh, Loctite or something to keep that from unthreading. But now we have a really nice, clean, um, precise little attachment point for our jack there. And whatever project you're making there, it's now got a bunch of jacks on it ready to plug some plugs into. Um, so before we go and, and build this project, and I want to get to that pretty quickly so we have time because there's, there's a bunch of little steps I want to do. Um, I also wanted to show you one other really neat thing you can do, which is use the tap and die on circuit boards or PCBs or permaproto boards. So uh, here I've got a little permaproto board. And let's say I want to use this um, in a configuration where I need to uh, screw it into something and these holes don't line up, or even better, use this kind of as the, the all-in-one panel. So maybe I have some circuit on there and then I want to put a knob directly on this, keep, keep it minimal. This works really well on the PCB. So I'm going to actually find one of the holes on the PCB with my center punch. Give that a little squeeze there. And voila, super clean hole. And now we can take something like a, where did I lose that to? Let me show you this. Oh, here's one I did earlier. Uh, so here I've got a potentiometer going through this. You would obviously need to um, deal with what you've just done to some of the circuit under here. And I'm, I'm bridging some things down. So you might need to either scrape, scrape away some pads uh, or put down something uh, like some electrician's tape or some Kapton tape to avoid shorting things. Uh, but it is a, an option for doing some interesting things. Uh, let's say, for example, we put um, one of our banana plugs through here like this. Maybe this could then be soldered to ground and we would have a really large plug for running ground to something else. So this is an interesting option. And uh, one of the other cool artifacts of this are these tiny little punch-out circuit boards you get. So uh, I know Sophie Wong had asked in, uh, on Instagram earlier, how the heck did you cut those? Well, that's how I cut those. This is uh, inadvertently made tiny little circuit boards. I think there's about three usable, uh, depending on where you punch it, if you get it centered right. You got three little... Um, pads that are connected still on that. I'm not sure what that's useful for. Maybe jewelry. I don't know. It's kind of cute. So that is the uh, general idea behind uh, punching these out. So what I'll do is, uh, you know what, in fact, we'll use that. I'm going to leave this clean one. Um, and I can shortcut some of this a little bit for us. Let's see if you can see that. Um, were you guys looking for these? Yeah, so the one I have here, actually my friend Doug North gave this to me a couple years ago, uh, and it was Northern Industrial Tools was the brand, but it's made in Taiwan, uh, this one, and I, I see it under other names, so if you look around, you should be able to find it. Sometimes the names vary, too. I've heard these called like punch pliers, um, maybe a couple other names. So let's see. Okay, so from this view, uh, what I've done here is... I've marked out, and in a second I'm going to show you what I'm actually building, so this makes some more sense. So I've marked out, um, let me switch that to the, be the big view, sorry. There we go. 
I've marked out six little spots on here uh, where I'm going to plug in some banana jacks. And one of the things I had to do is, is checking on the throat of this. You can see I can't quite get to center um, based on the tool I'm using. So I, instead of doing one, two, three across, I decided to do one, two, three down, one, two, three down. Um, so sometimes the tools dictate what your design is going to do a little bit. Uh, so let's get these punched. No, let me, uh, let me show you why I'm doing this. Let me go over to the, should I go over the computer? How about, yeah, let me show you the fritzing diagram so you, so you know what I'm trying to build. Um, so I mentioned we we're going to build a little puzzle. And let me switch over to a face cam view here. Uh, someone asked over in Discord, what kind of laser cutter am I using? So this is not a laser cut project, but uh, I mentioned lasers earlier. I have an Epilogue Zing. Uh, it's a 40 watt, 12 inch by 16 inch one. Um, I've had it for actually, I think more than 10 years now. It served me really well. It's a good cutter. Uh, so here, here's what we're building. So uh, this is a itsy bitsy, five volt itsy bitsy microcontroller, which is a new um, kind of replacement really for the uh, Trinket Pro. And so this microcontroller, I just, the first project I've done uh, with it, or I'm starting to do with it, I was just playing around with it a bit last night, and it's pretty cool. It's the same uh, 32U4 uh, chip that's on an Arduino Leonardo um, or a, uh, the Adafruit Metro. And so it has the same number of pins. It's, it's basically identical, just super tiny. Um, there are some differences. But functionally speaking, you get the same uh, pin mappings. So your code ports exactly between those. And this, of course, has the um, cool HID USB stuff that the, all the 32U4s do. So it'd be good for MIDI projects, good for USB projects. Um, but I thought this would be a really neat one for this. It's like $10, super cheap, uh, little microcontroller. And um, what I'm doing is a puzzle where, depending on how you connect using those, and I don't have a banana plug item in Fritzing, so I'm just using um, some of our audio jacks. But only one uh, terminal on these is, is uh, wired, because the banana jacks are only a single uh, conductor. So the idea here is this is a puzzle. Um, where each of the jacks has a different color on it, mostly color-coded to the wire you see, you see I have on here. And uh, the player would have to connect up the proper pairs of these plugs in order to pass uh, the puzzle. And so I'm doing this in sort of you know an escape room sort of style, except it's just a proof of concept. So all I have is a red LED and a green LED. It's going to be red when the project uh, starts or is turned on, powered up. And I'll have a little on-off switch for that. And then when the proper connections are made, it's going to go green. Um, I want to say, the, the, by the way, the uh, idea for the project came to me a little bit from like a cut the wire type of thing from any um, action movie from my youth where, where the SWAT team is there and they have to cut the proper wire. Um, the... Uh, idea of using banana plugs and, and jumpers. I actually knew we had these in the store and I wanted to use it, but I, I looked around online to see, has anyone built something like this before? And I found a guy on YouTube, and I'm going to forget his name now, but I'll look it up later, uh, who had built a really great project for this and came up with a very nice solution to having uh, the pins on the Arduino alternating between being input with a pull-up resistor, so input pull-up, versus output, so they can um, sort of run around the pairs that are possible and see who's connected without causing any problems. Um, so it's possible to change uh, whether a pin is input or output midstream. And so this is very clever. It just kind of toggles through them in pairs to see when things are connected properly. Uh, and I'm sorry, I can't, per can't remember his name now. He's a great YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, what the heck was it called? It has a good name too. Anyway, I will look that up in a, in a little bit. So let's get started building this. Um, you can see what I have are uh, 220 ohm resistors and these two LEDs that run to ground and then to pin, I didn't do pin 13 for this one, I did. Yeah, so pin 13 on the red one, 
and I think I chose like pin three uh, for the green one. And then most of the other pins in the middle there, which are numbered 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 5, I think, the 8, 6, and 4 along this small edge, those run to the different jacks. Uh, and then I've got a AA, 4 AA battery pack with an on-off switch that I'll use that's external. We have an internally um, available on-off on that case, but I want it on the outside of my project box. So let's get over to the bench cam, and I'll start showing you that uh, circuit and punching holes in the project box to get it started. I'm actually along the way going to grab a piece of styrofoam that's running around on my outside my workshop and making noise because of the wind. Stay. Well, maybe stay. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, this is the breadboarded version I did uh, of this. And I actually didn't want to solder anything to it because I wasn't sure if I was going to use uh, female headers or male headers on it. Um, so this is kind of very temporary and, and dangerous uh, connections here that I kind of have to hold still for the thing to work. But I got it up and running and working. And so in the interest of time, I think I will just show you the end product of prepping this board. Let me switch to this little camera here. So what I did was I took our little itsy bitsy and I have some of these 90 degree angle female headers. And so I soldered one of those. I'll, I'll, uh, let me pull apart the other one and show you. So I soldered the 90 degree angle female header like so, so that I have a neat little uh, low profile package that can be plugged into a set of wires like this and keep the, the thing very neat and small. So um, I'm, I'm sparing you from me doing all that soldering, but you can imagine what that looked like, right? So we soldered that in here. Uh, and then for power, I also took one of these JST extension cables and I snipped I had to cut the ends off of a couple ones that had already been somewhat scavenged, but I snipped those and connected the power and ground, uh, so this is battery power and ground on the itsy bitsy to the female, uh, I guess, is that the male? That's the male, male pins, female housing, I don't know which one is which on these, um, for the JST connector. And then for my battery pack, I've added this inline switch for power and then the power and ground go to this other JST. So when I plug that in, like so, I've got the battery pack powered on and then I've got my on off switch here where you can see, be able to see that little red LED go on and off. Okay. Um, so is there a tap and die lying there on my bench, someone asked. Uh, are you talking about this one? I think you're talking about that one. Maybe not. Oh, oh, you're talking about a tap tap. Yeah. So I'll show you in a second why I have this out. Um, I had a couple ideas of using that, and it has to do with me not having a big enough uh, punch and die on this. So, um, okay, so that then covers my connections from, let's get this right because you can put this in backwards. So ground, I do have that one as black. And then um, we're going to run. I think we'll run wires off of those banana plugs and plug them back into here, or I'll cut and strip these and solder them. That might be a little better. I don't need to have disconnectability on both sides, actually. So um, what else? OK, so my idea is I'm going to probably just use double stick tape to put the battery pack on the floor of the case. So that part would get stuck down, and that means the, the rest can kind of slide in and out if I need to change batteries. And I think I may end up. Um, taping the connector like that. Oh, you can't see what I just did, sorry. 
tape this connector on here maybe like this so that I can then just plug this in when I need to. Something, something like that so I can pull this on and off if I want. Uh, and since this one doesn't have any mounting holes on it, you have to come up with some clever methods uh, of keeping things secured. So we'll see what we do there. Uh, this is going to go through, uh, maybe I'll put that on the side here. Maybe it'll be our, yeah, how about that? This will be our on-off switch. I think that'll fit. So let's pull out this little 8-inch stereo jack, which wasn't really part of the project, but I wanted to demonstrate that. Uh, and then I'll pull off. I don't need the little keyed um, washer there that holds that straight. I will put this lock nut through, and I'm going to make this protrude just a little tiny bit. More than that. And let's see, is this on? Make up on, down off. Okay, so you can see there's our on off. And this can kind of go, might be easier to do here where I can pull it off and see it, or from the back where I can pull it off and see it. How about like there? So I'm going to wait to attach that until I get everything else wired up. Okay, so now let's move on to punching these holes. Um, and for these, I really, I just used a square to go in and um, measure off these spots, draw a little line, and then set some dots so that I get it aligned pretty well. And I'm going to throw on some glasses, both to see better, and you probably don't want to get a little piece of metal sort of flying through the air into your eyeball if you can avoid it. Uh, so let's go and see there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just try to, the best I can, Get that sharp little center of this punch into the hole that I marked. Bink. Okay. Uh, before I do the other ones, I'll show you this is not big enough for these banana plugs. So uh, they're actually kind of large. Um, oh, and I have a guide for myself. I made, I wrote down the names of the colors, and I want to use this uh, this way, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to use this this way to get things right. So we'll do, yeah, we'll do black, green, white. So this will be the green one that goes here. So this has a little bizarre nut on it. It's not a hex nut. It's just got a couple notches that you could turn with a very particular sort of tool, like a needle nose plier looking uh, retainer disc puller kind of looking thing. So that's not going to fit. So I, the reason I had the tap and die, or the tap out here was I was thinking of getting uh, these tapped and threaded, but this is the wrong size. So instead, um, and yes, I know this defeats the purpose a little bit of, of uh, having the, the punch and die because they're not the right exact size. But I'm going to use this reamer, and I've marked off the size where that's the correct size. So what, what we'll do is just go back and forth until we reach that taped mark. Okay, now you can see I've ruined the gorgeous uh, hole there with some debris. So I'm going to take a little, um, oh, I've forgotten this guy's name. What do you call these? little deburring tool. And that'll go and kind of re-chamfer that and get rid of the mess.
tool. Oh, and shout out to Don Bell because it was this is a recommendation that he made. Uh, I had used these before in workshops and I'd never had one for myself. And then uh, Don Bell on his weekly uh, Maker Update YouTube channel showed one in action and recommended that particular one. I said, good, I'm going to go get one. So now I have it. Thanks to Donald. So now we fit pretty well there. And we can go ahead and drop the... Pseudo nut. Does anyone know what these are called in the chat? Threaded collar thing. Okay, so we'll just get that finger tight. And there we go. So any questions so far or comments in the chat, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to... Uh, time for a step drill bit. That would be good, too. Yes. Uh, Duh, duh, duh. Good. All right. Lime green banana plug. Yeah, it's delicious. So um, uh, we actually sell five colors of these. I think we just sell a pack of five, and it's got five colors. I need six, so I actually cheated, and I took an extra yellow one and painted it white with a um, liquid paint pen. So that's the, that's the secret there to how, that, how I'm getting six colors. All right, so let's... Go through here and punch the rest of these. It's a little hard to see while I hold it under the camera there, but I think. Can you see that? Not really, sorry. All right. So we've got that little tooth started on there. And now pop, pop. Let's do this one here. That's good. Pop, pop. Let's take out these other three. Did anyone find, if you Google, um, what did he call it? The guy who did the, the logic for the uh, Arduino code for this puzzle I'm going to show you. I think if you Google Arduino wire puzzle, something like that. Connect the wire. Connect the wire. I think that's what he called it. If anyone wants to find that while I'm punching holes, that would be great. Whoop, I'm so sorry. Bam, to the camera. All right, one more on here. And then I've also got a couple of LED um, panel mount holders. So there we go, we got the holes started, and I'm going to go ahead and ream these out. Let me switch cameras for you. There we go. Um, and so the panel mount holder, same thing. They're a little big for the die that I have. I'm actually going to hold this over the trash just to get all this aluminum swarf out of the way. It's not too bad. And, you know, you can, if you're just doing one of these, you can ream a little, test ream a little more, test until the hole's big enough. But since I was doing a bunch of holes of the same size, I took the time to mark off with a little piece of tape. Oh, you can't see that at all, can you? Let me just go big workshop view for a second. And double, oh, there we go. Double workshop view, ready? I actually don't have a thing on my little camera switcher to turn off a layer or switch to a blank or transparent piece. But you can see I don't usually hit the right button the first time anyway, so I'm a little nervous about adding more buttons 
because I'll just be cycling through them all, all the time. All right, that looks great. So let's go ahead and deburr all of those. Here's your little deburrer. If you don't have a deburrer, you could go through with a file uh, or a knife that you don't care much about. <laughs> and just get rid of that little lip of stuff there. It's not going to hurt much of anything, but you kind of want to neaten it up and you don't want those getting jammed in the threads of something or worse. Also, you might not be working with aluminum. Ooh, it looks like I punched that one just a little bit off. I wasn't paying close enough attention to lining it up. My holes were marked well, but I couldn't see it very well when I was trying to punch that under. Oh, that's going to bother me, but oh well. Uh, oh, and this one I didn't remount. Oh, links don't work there. Sorry, you guys can't paste in links on YouTube. But yeah, if you just do a Google or a YouTube search, actually, for connect the wire puzzle Arduino, I think you'll find it. Alastair was the guy's name, but that was not his YouTube channel. It's coming to me slowly. Let's see the top one I missed. Good. All right. Let's give you there for a second. Uh, so following my little guide here, we'll do black, green, white. Where's that white one? I just had that out. Uh, set that there. And I think, yeah, I took off the little nut thing when I was painting it. Luckily, I didn't just lose that. Uh, so I say black goes in here. Oh, I did not deburr that top part very well, or maybe not at all. I've seen that the Ruiz brothers are using their, they have a similar deburring tool, using it on 3D prints, which is a cool idea. I have a hard time using those on anything other than inside of a circle, but sometimes I think you can drag it along a straight line. All right, so now blue, yellow, red. Mark Headley Jones has a GitHub repo, which includes a wire puzzle. Cool. Tony Stanny has a YouTube video for wire puzzle. There's a lot of wire puzzles. Isn't that a drill press back there? Yes, I do have a drill press. Um, that would work as well, but I kind of was excited about showing something that's a pretty small hand tool that works great for metal for people who don't have a drill. Um, and if you've got limited space and budget, uh, a pretty great tool for this. And to be honest, if you do have the right size die and uh, punch, the hole is super clean. It's hard to, hard to beat how nice that hole comes out when you use the right tool versus drilling it even with a stepped bit. Um, it's not quite as clean as the punch. And red. So by the way, another idea, if you're trying to make your puzzle, this type of puzzle, fiendishly difficult, you can include jacks that aren't actually connected up to anything, depending on how you're running the puzzle. Um, I don't give feedback every time something is plugged in. The, the guy whose YouTube video I was looking at, he did every, for every connection, I think you got something to light up. Um, I believe. Uh, I don't have it set that way, so you could put a bunch of fake ones in there that are there to just um, 
throw people off the scent if they haven't solved whatever. My idea is not that you just try combinations until it works, and therefore adding, adding more than just these uh, three pairs would be good, um, but instead to say that you're going to solve some other puzzle that leads you to know that green and blue go together, or red and yellow, or so on. Uh, okay, so those are in. Let's, uh, let's do the holes for the LEDs. And I think these are maybe even bigger. So let's, we'll do the punch and then we'll, uh, I'll have to ream those out a bit bigger to get. So where do the LEDs go? Let's do maybe up here and up here. Something like that would be kind of cool. Maybe right in the dead center of this thing. Farther back, in line with that, not in line with that. What? I'm going to put them there and there. I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm just going to get, I'll use my calipers for this. You can actually mark, um, and lock it down and mark it off. I'm not even measuring, as you can see. I'm just using this to transfer a mark. So I'll go. Make a little line there. Make a little line there. And then uh, I do need to measure off of something to, to get the same spacing this way. So I'm going to go from, there's a line. I don't know if you can see it there. Oh, let me switch cameras. Can do that view big. So you should be able to see there's the line I just put. I do have a line, it might be a manufacturing line from however this was bent, I think. So I'm going to lock this off. There's a little nut on the calipers you can use. And I'm just going to scribe a little line. There. do that very well. Okay, good. So X marks the spot. I'm just going to grab a marker. I actually have a, like a wet erase marker that I, what, have lost now? It lives here somewhere. I formerly had. <laughs> there it is. I'll use this just to, sorry, that's where one LED goes. And that's where the other goes. Right, let me try to get, you won't be able to see because the tool will be in the way. Let me try to get right on the dot this time. I think I can see a little better that way. Pop, pop. Ooh, it didn't punch it all the way through. So if it doesn't punch it all the way through, you got to screw the die up just a little bit um, so that it pushes all the way through. And I'm just going to re. Push that through. Is that a word? Re push through. There we go. So there's the holes for the LEDs. And again, these are uh, too big for the tool I've got, so I'm going to ream these through. I think they're bigger than the jacks. Um, this is the holder. This is the jack. So I'm going to have to ream quite a bit farther. I don't need this uh, piece of tape anymore either, so I'm going to just do both of these through the trial and error process. Watch out, these reamers are sharp. It's basically a bunch of knife blades sideways. So, um, Looks good. I actually made it too big. Awesome. Let's see if I pull that burr off, if it'll sit flush. I got aggressive with the uh, reamer. I'm rushing a little bit to get us done by two, but uh, or five if you're on the East Coast time. But take your time with this stuff. Okay, it covers it still. It just isn't staying in there a bit, so I'm going to have to put some glue or something 
hot glue or tape or something in there to keep that from bouncing around. Um, or use a bigger, yeah, I'll use, I'll use these. I, I was gonna say, I do have some 10 millimeter LEDs, no holders for them, but we could just pop giant LEDs through, which would be fun. All right, we'll take a lighter hand with this one. Let's see if we can get that sized. So that's just starting to go through. Oh, look, it's already perfect. That didn't take that much. Uh, I think maybe the LED pushes those flanges out a bit, so we'll see if, if, if we get lucky and that one stays. Well, there he goes. Uh, okay, so for, let me sweep this stuff up real quick. And then I'll show you, I already prepared the LEDs to share a common ground um, so that they can just go to one wire on that little bundle I made. I only needed 10. Uh, wire nine actually, I think nine wires coming off of the itsy bitsy. Uh, so let's go let do this one big. So here is the kind of bizarre looking pair of LEDs. So what I did was I joined uh, the ground side of these each to a 220 ohm resistor and then put heat shrink tubing over the whole uh, thing and then these will be able to be some distance apart, hopefully wide enough. Uh, and then I can run this, uh, the ground to a single point on our uh, itsy bitsy and then the two pins that are controlling uh, the flow of the current to these outer ones. So let's put these into their holders. There's one. There's the other one. Oh, let's put the holders through first. Who noticed that? I'm sure you noticed that. And let's put red on the, what will be the left. Yeah, I should have made these holes tighter for the LEDs. Good. Let's see if this reaches. So I was not accounting for that. Yeah, we should be okay. Might not be a bad idea to insulate the uh, other leg of the LED as well. Okay, so there's our that's how that's going to look. Uh, and so none of these are actually part of part of this, but I guess we'll just leave it there because I put those in and those could be uh, additional fun for a puzzle later. Um, okay, so let's start dealing with soldering this stuff up. How about? So I think what I'll do is, yeah, so I'm not sort of doing double duty. I'm actually going to I didn't need to put these in. These, are, these come as bare um, connectors, and then you pop them into different size um, housings. Uh, we sell like an assortment of these, so I popped those through there earlier. I didn't need to do that, but we'll sacrifice that with some scissors. I'll just cut that off about here. And then we'll start stripping these and soldering them to stuff. So I'm gonna, let's see, let me pull this camera a little closer so I can work in view. That'll work. Um, this, it's a chance, sometimes my auto strippers will work with a group of wires at a time. Let's put like four of them in here. It works pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't if there's too many in there. I'm not quite sure why, but 
so you can't get a good enough grip. It kind of mangles things. Um, and those actually should probably be longer than that, just so that we can thread them through all these banana uh, plug connectors and then solder them. So I've just pushed the little throat stop back on the stripper. Uh, let's do, let's see, let's figure out how he's going to be arranged. Now this can kind of come like that and forward, and then when you open it. Problem is, you think it's a lot of wire, and then, and then you realize once this is here, how am I going to get things open? That's part of the reason why I made this um, have a disconnecting um, instead of soldering it straight to the itsy bitsy. All right, so let's do some, I think I'll try to get away without tinning these again just because of time. It would be better um, to tin them. It makes it a little easier to get a good connection. It also makes it easier to thread stranded wire through holes when it's tinned so you don't get little strays poking off. Um, but we have 11 minutes according to my clock over there. May go a little bit over. I have to get this built and functioning before we finish today. So if you're with me. Yeah, Yannick Maury says that auto stripper is awesome. I really like this thing. I, I've had it for years. It's, uh, I think it's an Italian company that, that put their name on it. It's made in Taiwan. Um, they're pretty good. They're not so great for really thin gauge stuff. I can't use it on little 30 gauge silicon stranded wire, for example. I use a more traditional stripper. Um, but yeah, I've had good success with these, more so than the, the other kinds I've had where it like grabs on both ends and pulls. Um, these have worked well for me. All right, so let's do, I'll do the, um, oh, this white one. I'm actually going to chop him off because he's not used. I left him in there in case, but just I didn't use every pin across this row. I had to skip one. Uh, that was the USB wire. So let's do... I'm going to leave the LEDs for last, and so those are going to be this, uh, let me orient this this way. So looking at my chart, so I'm going to have ground going to an LED. We're not actually using the ground for any of, uh, any of the banana plug stuff, because that's all internal pull-up resistors on the chip that are figuring those things out for us. Um, gray goes to the red LED, so I'm going to peel this stuff over like that. This brown one is also going to an LED. And that leaves these, which are going to the banana plugs. And they're actually mostly color-coded other than, uh, so black is the, the black plug is going to be this purple wire. Blue is blue, yellow is yellow. Orange is going to be that white one that I painted, and red is red. So let's, uh, let's see how I can, I can actually take this off of here. For now, as long as I plug that in properly, we're okay. And we'll do purple is going to be black. Yeah, okay, so let's start going like this. Uh, I'm just going to twist this, get it in there, try to wrap it around once, like a little mechanical connection, and then solder that. Let's see if we can see that. That should sit still, sort of. I'm going to jam something here so it doesn't rock too much. And let's get some solder on that. Last night in the chat on one of the shows, I think on Ask an Engineer, someone was asking about solder fumes. Um, the dangerous thing with solder fumes is the flux, so you really don't want to be breathing in that stuff. Lead is not good that it's on your hands. You want to wash that before you go eat. But I have a pretty good breeze in here right now in the workshop, so I'm not turning on a little um, fan. You kind of have to heat this up a lot because that's a big chunk of metal absorbing all your heat. You don't want to get a cold solder joint. Let me 
looks like it might be good. We'll see. Uh, so next, we'll just do green to green over here. And tell me in the chat if that's out of focus. I can't see the monitor that I'm watching on uh, too well. I'm just going to hit the little auto focus and make sure that it. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I actually had to get a new hover cam. That's the little down shooter I'm using. The on screen. Um, touch screen button stopped working last week for some reason and or the week before and they immediately sent me a replacement which was very cool of uh, the hover cam people so let's see blue goes to blue orange goes to white it's nice when you can actually have enough colors of wire for your project to definitively color code things. It's not always possible once you get enough wires going and you have to use stripes or labels or just pay a lot of attention. Looks good. Let's do Red will go over to red, blue and right. Better focus now. Okay, thanks. Go ahead and tell me if you see that next time. Um, because I usually autofocus thing and it'll stay there, and then I'll move something bigger in front of the camera, and then we go out of focus. Yeah, soldering to these isn't probably ideal. It'd be nice if I got some kind of a little lug that, a little terminal lug that slipped over there and clipped in. That would be kind of cool. Um, but these shouldn't have much, if any, stress on them, so I think they'll be okay. But that will be the first, if something goes wrong once I fire it up, that'll be the first thing I'll suspect is, do I have any cold solders? Okay, one more of these, and then we've got the uh, LEDs, and I already did the on-off switch and battery pack thing, so that one's taken care of. I really do like to make as much of this stuff on the live stream as I can, but we just don't have much time in an hour, so I had to cooking show a couple steps. Okay, red, red, yellow, yellow, blue, blue, orange, white, green, green, purple, black, great. Uh, let's do these LEDs now. I don't have a fancy plan for these. I think I'm just gonna turn this to the side so you can see it. Uh, so the green one goes to this. I'm just gonna twist these guys and solder them. Right here, let's put a little Oh, this is the loose one. Darn, I'm so sorry I made that hole too big there. I'll have to do something about that. All right, so that's my big fancy plan there for getting that connected. That solders easily by comparison. Let's take that right now and wrap some gaffer's tape around it just so it stops popping off. I'm just going to take 
a little like that. Oh. Push this in. Instant fix. No one will ever know, except for you. Don't tell anyone, please. And now we've got to do gray to anode of the red. It really is helpful, by the way. I keep looking over here. It's really helpful for me that I printed out my fritzing diagram and can pay attention to that. Okay. Granger part number. Who found a, did someone find this on Granger? Oh, they're saying it's overpriced on Granger. Oh. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I would check eBay for these little, if you're talking, are you talking about the die? Um, oh, arcade quick wires. That would be kind of cool stuff with Kirby. Yeah, I like those. I used up almost all of them on my button box. I had a bunch of them. Um, this project I decided to work on for today, yesterday. So sometimes I plan out my build farther in advance and I'll order things. This one I had gotten some of these banana connectors in a few weeks ago knowing that there would be something I'd want to make, but I wasn't quite sure. Um, so a lot of it I had to figure out what was possible based on what's already in my shop. All right, last thing is going to be ground here. That, yeah, mostly. Uh, that's the ground for the LED. All right, there's definitely room for neatening some of that stuff up, but we don't have time. So, uh, before I put it all together, let's try it while it's out of the box. Um, and so, let me lift, I'm gonna lift this camera up for a second and we'll refocus it. Do -do -do. Let me move some things out of the way. Refocus. Boop. And, okay, so now you should be able to see, I'm going to take the battery box and just set it to the side here so we can reach, and I can turn that on. Um, and let's get this right. So ground is... Find the easiest way to have the slack I need. So ground is is the hey where'd he go? Ground is that. I'm gonna kind of flip this upside down while we work. All right. So what we should see is when I flip this on, red LED should go on. Uh, so does the onboard one because I'm using 13. So that's good. Um, and now I am just going to cheat because I've written down what connections to make. Um, so I've got some little banana, short little banana plug uh, wires that I made. Uh, so these unscrew, and you plug in the wire and screw them down. Um, so I already know, because I'm a big cheater, that blue goes to black. Uh, and I'm talking about the plugs, not the wires, the wire colors don't mean anything, but you could use that too to enhance kind of the, the, uh, the puzzle, confuse people in the puzzle. Rotate that right there. Uh, what else? I know that green goes to white. Dun, dun, dun. And yellow goes to, oh, I said what? Green goes to white. I said white. Did you guys catch that? And we're going to go yellow to red, yes. This should turn green. Uh-oh. It didn't. What did I do wrong? So let's check uh, black to blue. I did. Green to white, I did. Yellow to red, I did. This looks plugged in properly. Uh, let's check if we don't have any loose connections. By the way, the red turns off when I get it right, so as long as I can see the red. Actually, we'll see the green through from here. Um, okay, something's wrong. That looks plugged in right. Did 
I see a blink? No. I'm just going to wiggle these a little bit too. Uh, oh, oh, is this the one I changed the code on? Oh, I hope it's not. I can't switch to the other one right now. Let's see. We're just about out of time. So I did switch at one point if I was using pin 8, which was along the side, versus pin 7, I think. I hope I have the right software on this one. Let's go, um, let's I'm gonna pull this off of here, and I'm just going to re-upload. Um, so this, here's a reason why I like having that separate, right? So let me switch over to my um, workstation for a second, and I'm just going to re-upload the Arduino code to this one to make sure uh, that we have the pins right. So, in fact, I can show you the code. Uh, let me get a little face cam here. Hello. And I will grab an Arduino window. That's the one, wires puzzle. Okay. So let's add a screen capture. Cut the blue wire, someone said. It's Todd Bot. Hey, Todd. How you doing, man? Nice to see you in our chat here. Yeah, what did I do wrong? Let's let's find out. So I'm going to make a new window using Arduino wire puzzles. Okay. Okay. And here you go. Let me make this a little wider. Uh, so 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 5, yeah. So I'm going to plug in this um, itsy bitsy. And I will upload. I'm just going to check real quick. You won't see this pop up, but I'm checking that I have an itsy bitsy 5 volt selected and the right port I do. If I get this wrong, I would um, upload code over to my camera switcher, and that would be bad. And writing is done. Good. Okay. So let me pull this. Uh, and so let's let's double check these. So look in the code here. Um, the pins that I'm using are 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 5. Then the index of those is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This section right here is um, the pins the pin pairs that, that should be connected. And those are 0 and 1, which is 12 and 11. Uh, and I'm going to cheat and pull my fritzing diagram up so I can look at that. So um, 12 was that purple or black, and 11 was blue. So that was the black and blue. Uh, 10 and 5, so the second index and the fifth index, so 0, 1, 2 and 3, 4, 5. So it's 10 and 5 are a pair. Uh, and those are green and red. Is that not what I had? Let me grab that piece of paper. Let's see. Oh, maybe I got those wrong. Let's see. Let's do that again. So 2 and 5 are 0, 1, 2. So 10 and 5. And those are going to be green, and red. Yeah, okay, so I wrote those wrong. So I'm going to write the right thing on my little paper here and bring that back over to the workbench. So green will go to red, and therefore white to yellow. So let's switch those and check. So I think the code was okay, and it was, I think it was uploaded to this board. So, dun, dun, dun. Oh, let me, uh, I have to give focus back to this here. And, all right, this is exciting. <laughs> this is the escape room. It's a meta puzzle. All right, so let's get that plugged in properly. So ground, where are you? You're there. So this goes in upside down, we determined, yeah? I would feel better if that were like a keyed connector, but it isn't. All right. So uh, I just left the paper over there, but wh what did we say? Someone tell me. Well, all we have is Todd saying cut the blue wire. Very funny, Mr. Bot. All right. 
I said that now it's actually yellow to white. and green to red. Ta da It worked! Yay, and with extra drama. Ha <laughs> ha! I, I promise I didn't uh, cook that up. That really just happened. Um, so let's switch over to this little view. We can get a little closer up on that one. Uh, oh, actually, let's put, let's put the thing together, right? Let's finish putting this together. So I know we're a few minutes over. I hope you don't mind. Let me get rid of that so now we know. Uh, so I'll turn that off. And now, ignoring those cables there, um, let's figure out best orientation for this stuff. And hopefully these won't conflict with that switch here, these unnecessary ones on the back. Um, I think this can be... Ooh, let's see. I didn't, I didn't actually measure the depth of these. Those are going to hit our battery pack, so we'll shove the battery pack way in the back here. I'm actually going to pull these back ones off. You didn't have anything you had to do, anyone, did you? You can tune out if you got to go. Sorry, we're running late. These weird connectors are not, these uh, non-nut non, non -nut nuts are, uh, where are you? Not something I can get off in a hurry, actually. And let's see, that, I think that'll clear. All right, so I'm not going to um, stick this battery pack down with tape yet. I will use double stick tape for that eventually. Uh, and I won't do anything with this guy at the moment either. Let's see if this will just dry fit like this. Yeah, I hadn't thought of how far in the banana plugs, those lugs are pretty big, so hopefully they won't squish anything, but I think looks like we're going to be okay. Yep. We're in. Okay, so let's, let's see about, you kind of see where things want to go naturally, so I'll try taping that um, battery pack there just with a little bit of Double stick foam tape. Oh, look, I'm at the end of the roll. That's not good. I rely on this stuff. I have some other, I like this little sort of spongier version, uh, but I have some of that stiffer tape as well. And it's okay to jam it up to the wall on the top because this will actually slide away that way to change the batteries out. Um, and I think that's clearance enough for this, and I'll still be able to pop it off if I what I tape is the connector. Uh, so if we still have some usable portion of this tape, there we go. We will just put that on the connector only. Nope. See that moving in there, so I'll fix this up with some better tape later. But for now, we'll get that all aligned. Oops. Okay, that one, yeah, you know what? This one that I didn't take out is still bumping into stuff. So. Space planning for your project. There we go. Uh, and these 
little cases come with pre-drilled holes and these little sort of self-tapping screws. Um, I'll just put a couple of them in that kind of bite in there. You don't want to pull them open and closed too often, but you can certainly, if I can find a screwdriver, uh, you can certainly open them every once in a while to change the batteries out on this thing. I'll just leave that one in there for now. And there we go, we have our self-contained banana plug panel mount puzzle box, the wire puzzle. Dun, dun, dun. So I, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. That uh, is a couple little lessons in, in uh, getting some holes punched neatly for your panel mount. Uh, maybe another time we'll look at a nibbler and, and ways to do some square holes or bigger holes, but uh, that right there is your is your friend there, the uh, punch and die tool. And uh, it makes a very nice clean hole, which you can see I dealt with in some cases, making them bigger with a couple other tools. Uh, so I'm gonna head over to the chat and we'll wrap this up, but I'll hang out over in the Discord chat for a little bit if people have any questions. Uh, and oh, we can go over to there we go. Discord chat. Uh, ooh, hey, thanks Adafruit for that reminder. We've got Adabox 07 shipping soon, and it looks like you can still subscribe. One of the last reminders, so please check it out. There's going to be a lot of very good, fun, interesting projects you can make with 007. I promise you will enjoy it, personally. I personally promise that. Uh, hey, uh, C. Grover, thanks for saying you budget extra time for my workshops. They do tend to go a little long sometimes, and I appreciate the compliment. Uh, and before I forget, we have a coupon code today, 10% off. The code is Iron Fist. Uh, I came up with that name because the punch, punch and die. Iron Fist. So if you use Iron Fist in the Adafruit store, you can get 10% off anything and everything except for gift certificates. And that offer is good for people who watch this show or your friends who you happen to tell about it. Uh, and it is good today only. So at uh, 11.59 tonight, you probably want to hit buy. Uh, thank you, Matambale, for enjoying the Iron Fist reference. Um, and I want to thank everyone for coming by in the, oh look, John Shasta, you said you subscribed last night to Adabox. That is excellent. Very cool. Uh, oh, and I'm happy to see it looks like Facebook did launch at some point. I had a problem with getting Facebook Live started today, but it looks like it did it. So that is all I've got for today. Sounds like an airplane's going by. I'm going to play with my little magic uh, puzzle box here. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.